So if you recently saw one of my community tab posts, you saw me thinking about making paleo catalog videos about some of the more obscure creatures in the fossil record. Animals that we generally only have fragmentary remains of, or even in some cases, only a single specimen. These are animals that are still very much a mystery to science. But despite this, I find them fascinating and still think there should be a catalog video made for them. That being said, before I begin, I feel like I should have a disclaimer made about this topic. Tim Tim! The animal being talked about today is going to be discussed based on the geological evidence we have available at the time of this recording. We hope that in the future more fossils are found that expand our understanding of the history of the natural world. However, please understand that if new fossil evidence is found, it is very possible that the information provided in this video will be considered outdated or wrong. This is just something that we have to accept when talking about animals that nobody has seen alive, and if our information is proven incorrect, we know that all of those watching our videos will understand and not come out of the woodwork and bombard the comments of a five-year-old video to tell us that we're stupid for not knowing something that nobody knew at the time of recording this, because that would make you an asshat. Don't be an asshat. Thank you, Tim Tim. And now for our first entry in the Paleo Catalog Basics. I decided to talk about an animal that was suggested to me by one of my very first subscribers. In a post where I was asking different ideas for some different animals that meet this criteria, Skylar Cox suggested, among other things, that I make a video about Palarchestes. And considering I've been waiting to make a video about Australian Ice Age megafauna for a while, I thought this would be an excellent first entry in that series. Especially since, on a continent that's kind of famous for its weird animals, this might actually be the weirdest one. The name Palarchestes was first coined in 1873 by the anatomist Richard Owen, who first thought this was some sort of prehistoric kangaroo. In his defense, he only had a fragmentary jaw to work with. And it was from this lacking information that's where Owen would come up with the somewhat unfitting name Palarchestes, which means ancient leaper. And this wasn't the end of the unfortunate events surrounding its naming, because despite Owen being very explicit about the basis for the name in his initial description, after finding some more skull fragments in 1945, paleontologist Harold Fletcher published a paper that listed the animal's name being translated to Ancient Dancer. Despite this name being absolutely god-awful, the fact is that neither translation really fits well. Because in 1958, Palarchestes was reclassified. It's now believed that this isn't a large species of kangaroo at all, but instead much closer related to the Diprotodont family tree. So closer to wombats and koalas than kangaroos and wallabies. But still definitely very different from all of those. Despite this thing being compared to kangaroos early on in its discovery, and actually being from a branch of the wombat family tree, as we've found bits and pieces of this animal's remains, we've learned that this may have been one of the most unique animals from the Pleistocene Australian landscape. It was similar to the size of a horse, but based on the leg bones that we've found, it's believed that this animal may have weighed up to a ton. It had claws on its front hands that is believed to have been used for pulling down branches or possibly tearing bark away from trees. Structures in the lower jaw suggest that it may have had a long tongue similar to a giraffe, and what we have of the nasal bones have indicated that it may have actually had a proboscis similar to a tapir. This has led scientists to once again give it an unfortunate nickname, of marsupial tapir. However, recent evidence has yet again proven that we have a very limited understanding of this creature. After analysis of its cranial morphology showed that it instead was far more likely to have prehensile lips rather than a trunk. And regardless of what this bizarre animal may have looked like, pretty much all of its features seem to have been adaptations for a very particular lifestyle. And by understanding these clues, we can start to gain a better understanding of what Palarchestes may have been like in life, and possibly even why it no longer exists today. 
To understand what this animal might have been like, you first have to understand the world that it evolved to live in. As I briefly stated in my video talking about why dinosaurs were unable to expand as successfully in the Cenozoic compared to the Mesozoic, during the Eocene, much of the world was covered in tropical forests across much of the land. And this did start to change as we got into the Oligocene, and the global climate became cooler and drier. But Australia was one exception to this. The continent remained largely covered in forests for several million years longer, and it was here in the warm Australian jungles that the ancestors of Palarchestes evolved. They became specialized at browsing on higher branches that only arboreal species like its distant cousin the koala could reach. And in fact, this high browsing lifestyle may have made them evolve in a way that directly mirrors a completely different group of mammals that existed half a world away in South America. And that is where this creature gets what is probably its most befitting name. It's not a leaper, and it certainly isn't a dancer. It's not a marsupial tapir. But if anything, it's a marsupial ground sloth. Specialized on browsing on the broad leaves of trees that early macropods and other diprotodontids couldn't reach. And it was in these forests that they would become, as far as we know, the largest mammals in the Miocene Australian jungle. Now, after better understanding how the marsupial ground sloth lived, it may be kind of easy to see how this animal went extinct. This was an animal that pretty much required rainforest habitats to survive. And anyone who has seen modern day Australia knows that this isn't really what the land looks like anymore. However, there are some species that are rainforest specialists in Australia that survive today. Animals that likely lived alongside Palarchestes during the Pleistocene. So why did this species die out and others didn't? And the truth is, this is something that we can only really guess at. But unlike most of the animals that died out around 40,000 years ago, the lacking fossil evidence suggests that the marsupial ground sloth may have already been on its way out. During that time, the drying out that Australia had tried to resist for millions of years had finally caught up with it, and the once vast rainforests had dwindled to the far northeast of the continent. The rest of Australia had become far more suited to grazers and low browsers. And in addition, a group of kangaroos were also becoming more and more specialized to high browsing. The group of short-faced kangaroos, like the giant Procoptodon, with their food source already becoming more rare, and increased competition for the little bit that was left, the marsupial sloths were likely already in trouble before the first aborigines ever set foot on Australia's northern shores. And I'm sure as you can probably guess, humans arriving is never good for an already struggling species. We do believe that Palarchestes did live long enough to be seen by humans, based on this rock art that is believed to have depicted one of these incredible examples of convergent evolution. So despite us having a very limited amount of fossil evidence, we've been able to paint an interesting picture of this missing piece of the Pleistocene Outback puzzle. I want to thank Skylar for suggesting this animal for my first Paleo Catalog Basics video. I've been looking for an excuse to dive into Australian megafauna for a while, since they are some of the most fascinating animals that have ever lived in my opinion. If anyone else has some suggestions for more obscure creatures to cover, please be sure to drop a comment and let me know. And other than that, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Have a good one everybody.